Today, we'll be talking about corporate technology and the Global Siemens R&D department. And um, now, how might the future look like in 20 years um, from now? But not only for a specific part of Siemens, we're talking about a holistic view. And if there was something like a fortune teller or a crystal ball, you could say, okay, in, in the hands of Siemens, our next expert would have it and would be able to tell us what the future might look like. So let's please bid up for the head of technology, field business analytics and monitoring at the Siemens Corporate Technology. Here is Dr. Michael May. Yes, good morning everyone. I want in the next 15 minutes uh, to give you an overview what uh, corporate technology, the central R&D department of uh, Siemens is uh, doing and uh, I want uh, to show you how Siemens is continuing its tradition in innovation which is 170 years old and uh, is still driving innovation in many areas. If you look at this timeline, so the, the milestones uh, uh, we had in the past 170 years, so there is um, the pointer telegraph, there's the dynamo, there is uh, the Zymatic controller, very important for this uh, fair. There is the MIT scanner, and, and there in 2016, there is MindSphere as the IoT operating uh, system for the Internet of uh, uh, Things. But innovation, of course, does not stop here, and the next wave of innovation is just around the corner. And I want to give you a glimpse on the things which uh, will be coming in the next years. First of all, uh, overview on some figures on research at Siemens. Quite impressive numbers, I think. Overall, 4.7 billion euro are spent on R&D within Siemens. 33,000 employees in R&D. 7,500 uh, innovation, 3,500 patents every year. These are quite big figures. And in this overall research R&D ecosystem, corporate technology is playing a quite important role with in total seven 400,000 uh, employees, um, some working on software engineering, making the innovation happen, bringing it from innovation into product, and then about 1,600 researchers, and that's the focus of my talk uh, here, that work on the next wave of uh, innovation. Now, how will the future look like? So if you walk around uh, this uh, fair, you see that digitalization is really the driving topic of uh, many things uh, which are now uh, happening. And uh, this is of all course also true uh, for Siemens. And we have structured our research around this topic of digitalization and automation along with a more traditional topic Siemens is known for in electrification and uh, electrics. First of all, digitalization. So this is uh, the research department headed by Norbert Gauss, research in digitalization and uh, automatization. And if you work on this topic, it's very important that you don't take a very narrow-minded uh, view on just single isolated spot, uh, spots, but that you see the whole of digitalization because uh, the technical world as a whole will be transformed by digitalization and not just in very individual spots. So the way we drive it, uh, we have uh, departments working on the monitoring and the sensing part. So that's the where the data comes from that you need for digitalization. So much of industry 4.0 is data driven and to be driven by data, you need access to it. And that's why you need sensing and uh, data collection and uh, monitoring. Then the next part, that's uh, data analytics and uh, artificial intelligence, and that's the part I'm responsible for at corporate uh, technology. This is about transforming data into knowledge and into increasingly automated decision. Then the next part, uh, if you want to build 
AI and uh, robotics, you need a very solid infrastructure on uh, the software development and the processes. And this is why we have this, how to build these systems that are interoperable, that work with each other in this digital world, uh, have as a own research topic on software uh, processes. Then, as the next point, if you have these, these are very generic things, AI, data collection, uh, software engineering, you can apply it, for example, to the digital twin, to the future of uh, virtual engineering. And um, again, this is our own topic. Or you can apply it to autonomous systems, robotics as uh, the most uh, uh, pictorial part of uh, autonomous uh, systems, uh, robots that work autonomously, yet another research topic. And to make, to integrate all that into a seamless infrastructure, you need the Internet of Things, where the data is collected from devices, where the things communicate with each other, and um, that's yet another research topic. And then, finally, all that does not lead to good results if you forget about security. So the Internet of Things has big chances, but of course also risks if you don't handle security appropriately. And all these things work together uh, to building platforms like Mindsphere to create new products uh, in the robotics um, and, or 3D printing area or in the digital twin. That is digitalization, but um, uh, of course there is also the more traditional part of uh, Siemens with electrification and uh, electrics. And also this, of course, will play a huge part in a future technical uh, world. But this world is going to change. So what we will see is decentralized uh, energy systems. We will see new forms of uh, storage. We will see more advanced uh, materials uh, with uh, new properties, new forms of manufacturing, 3D printing, for example. Uh, we see electromobility and uh, the more traditional things like uh, power electronics. And um, even if these two parts are separated within corporate technology, the department on uh, electrification and electrics is headed by Professor Armin Schnettler. In reality, these things work closely together and many innovations on digitalizations are innovations that help, for example, to build a better energy systems or the decentralized uh, um, grid. Now to give some more concrete, specific examples on what we are working. So one aspect that will have a big impact on the way we will live in the future are of course decentralized energy systems, so the smart grid. But that is a revolution that does not happen overnight. It will take quite a time to have it. And we cannot just jump into it without being prepared and without having ideas. What is the impact on the market? Uh, what is uh, the impact um, on uh, the way, on the availability of energy? And for that reason, we have quite big research efforts on the simulation of the digital grid to anticipate now how future decisions in the digital grid will look like. Now, on the other hand, on the future of uh, mobility, Siemens is also working on uh, electro-hybrid uh, aviation, so in a cooperation with uh, Airbus on uh, building uh, airplanes for 60 to 90 people, which is quite a big shift, even a revolution uh, for aviation if you have that, because if you have uh, uh, electro-hybrid uh, aviation, you can save a lot of fuel and uh, also emissions. Next example, the intelligent uh, Internet of Things. What we see now increasingly are systems that collect data and store them in a central cloud and analyze them. And here on the fair you can see Mindsphere as an operating for making that happen. But on the re research side, uh, a lot of uh, emphasis is now shifting to bring the intelligence into the devices. So not in a central repository, but to the edge. Uh, where the devices, where the zematic controllers are, uh, where the medical equipment is to make this more intelligent and allow it to cooperate. And uh, to give an example, uh, this is not yet a product, of course, but it's a very nice example that you could see on this uh, affair. These are robots, spider-like robots, that cooperate with each other and communicate and have 3D printing capabilities to build uh, new equipment. So this is a research prototype, but it shows 
shows you how the future of manufacturing, what is called here mobile manufacturing, might um, actually uh, look like. Then the next examples, also something that will bring about a revolution in industry is uh, 3D printing. Siemens is working for quite a while on that topic now and uh, recently has uh, achieved a breakthrough in uh, printing, 3D printing uh, the blades uh, of, of a turbine and putting that into a full load uh, field test. And uh, this shows uh, what changes we can expect in the future on this field of uh, of uh, manufacturing with more flexible 3D printing. And then, and here the loop to the smart energy is, is closing. If you want to make decentralized energy ha happen, you also need uh, new forms of storage systems that are more efficient. And um, that is a more traditional part of uh, Siemens on which we are working. But also here, it's, it's very crucial for the future decentralized energy uh, for the um, electro hybrid airplanes and uh, other things to have these new forms of storage systems. And um, what you see here, it's uh, quite a holistic view on how innovation is done. And if people ask me, why is it exciting to be at corporate technology? Uh, my answer is, if I'm working at corporate technology and if I'm going through the labs, if I make a lab tour, I can see get a glimpse, get an idea how the future, how the technical work in, in 10 or 15 years will look like. So I start in Munich on the first floor, that's my own department, uh, that's artificial intelligence, there we build the brain, how uh, future Siemens products will uh, look like or how they will work. If you go to the first floor, you go to the robotics department, which built the spider robots uh, that communicate each other and which, which make use of artificial intelligence uh, and uh, that brain, then you get still one level up and you see the people working on the smart grid, on simulating this future of our energy systems. You go to the next building and see the people working on uh, the electro-hybrid airplane and if you have completed your tour, you have quite a good view how the world will look like. And this is what makes uh, corporate technology and working there so exciting. And I'm pretty confident that in the next years we will continue this roadmap of innovations uh, from Siemens with a lot of new products in uh, around digitalization, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.